The reactions of amines are due to the basicity due to the presence of a nitrogen with a set of lone pairs. What we see in here is the molecule of ammonia, which is the parent as we replace hydrogens and place carbons for the family of amines. We say that this amino group can react when we have an acid, a proton can be abstracted to produce what we call an ammonium salt. When we discuss the basicity of amines, we know that aliphatic amines are stronger bases than the molecule of ammonia, and ammonia is a stronger base than the aromatic amine aniline. The first reaction that we look with the actual molecules are the reaction with hydrochloric acid. We have the same set of lone pairs as in the molecule of ammonia, so this nitrogen can react with the hydrogen to produce a, an ammonium salt. This is another example of the reaction of amines with hydrochloric acid. The only difference is that now we have a secondary amine. This is a secondary amine because the nitrogen is bonded to two carbons, but we still have a long pair of electrons, so we have an attack to the hydrogen to produce a brand new covalent bond. So we have increased the number of hydrogens bonded to the nitrogen. We start with one hydrogen bonded to the nitrogen. Now we have two hydrogens making covalent bond with the nitrogen, making another ammonium salt. The last case is a tertiary amine with the same reactivity. Uh, we have acetylone pairs reacting with the acid to produce also an ammonium salt. I also want you guys to see that we can condense the formulas for amines. You see here, this is a structural formula, it's condensed, but now we see that it's condensed, all of them in one line. We need to be able to answer questions when all of the carbons and all of the elements are in one line. We have one, two, three methyl groups, that now are placed in parentheses, but this is still the same molecule. The last reaction for the family of amines is the reaction between amine, that could be primary, secondary, or tertiary amine, with what we call a haloalkane or alkyl halide. It's either haloalkane or alkyl halide. This is a haloalkane because I have a chlorine, it could be a bromine, and when we see these atoms, we have a difference in the electronegativity values between the halogen and carbon. So this is more electronegative. This chlorine is pulling electron density from the carbon. So this carbon can be uh, positively charged, partially positively charged. Because this is a partially positively charged carbon, we can have electron density from the nitrogen providing both of the electrons to make a brand new covalent bond. This is what we call coordinate covalent bond, when one of the atoms gives both of the electrons. Now we have four bonds around this nitrogen. We have increased the number of carbons, so this was a primary amine now has become secondary ammonium salt because we have two carbons bonded to this nitrogen and we have two hydrogens. So the nitrogen has four bonds. It must carry a plus charge and this is also an ammonium salt. Since this is a salt, this is now an ionic compound, which means we have a plus charge and a negative charge this chlorine is not making covalent bond with this part, but this is ionic bond. Many amines with useful medicinal properties are sold as their ammonium salts. This is just one example. We are familiar with the substance called Benadryl for allergies. This is diphenylhydramine, which is the active ingredient in this compound is diphenylhydramine that upon reaction with hydrochloric acid becomes an ammonium salt. We see a tertiary amine that now has the hydrogen making a brand new covalent bond, positively charged nitrogen, negative charge of the chlorine, 
This is an ammonium salt. In our discussion of the different types of amine, we describe primary amine as that that has one carbon attached to the nitrogen and two hydrogens. A secondary amine was that that has two carbons attached to the nitrogen. And this is a tertiary amine when we have three carbons attached, bonded to the nitrogen. There is a new family that we need to discuss, and that is when we have an increase in the number of carbons, so we will have what is called a quaternary ammonium salt when we have four carbons bonded directly to the nitrogen. So we will not have a set alone pairs. It will be a salt, it will be an ammonium salt, but it's an ammonium salt of a quaternary ammonium salt that it has very important medicinal applications. This is an example of the formation of a quaternary ammonium salt. We have the molecule of trimethylamine, which is a tertiary amine reacting with the haloalkane chloroethane, two carbons long. This carbon is partially positively charged because of the electronegativity value of chlorine, is pulling electron density. So we can have a reaction between the base and the carbon that is partially positively charged. So we can have the formation of a brand new covalent bond between the nitrogen and the carbon. It's getting a partial plus charge and we have now an ionic bond. This is a quaternary ammonium salt. This is a summary of some of the important applications of the family of amines. The first one is the foul odor of low molecular weight substances such as trimethylamine that is found in rotten fish, the high capability for the formation of hydrogen bonds in substances that will be useful when we look at protein structure. We can have some amino acids with the formation of hydrogen bonds with the amino group. We also have the basicity of amines. We can react amines to make drugs more soluble by forming ammonium salts. We also have some of those amines that are found in nature with some neurotransmission properties. Serotonin is important for our brains. We also have some aromatic amines as part of the DNA structure and some alkaloids like caffeine, heroin, nicotine, morphine that are also found in nature.